Hello everyone, my name is Dominique. I'm the head of communications here at Digma, and today I'm going to be talking about my experience transitioning from a laptop keyboard to a mechanical ergonomic split keyboard. I've been using a laptop for more than 10 years and when I first transitioned to a mechanical keyboard, you can understand that it felt weird and the transition period took, I would say, at least a month. But in the end, after learning how to type on a mechanical keyboard and after learning how to type on a split keyboard, it was just an awesome feeling. So the two main topics I'm going to be talking about in this transition is the keyboard being mechanical and it being split. If you're used to typing on a laptop keyboard, the first thing you notice when you switch to a mechanical keyboard is the size. You actually feel that it's bigger. And this kind of boils down to a few things. First, the switches. Laptop switches have a totally different mechanism to mechanical switches, and typing on them both feel different. Mac laptops have scissor switches, which allow for a shorter travel distance of 1.5 millimeters. Whereas when you have mechanical keyboards, their switches have a total travel distance between 3 millimeters to 4 millimeters. So you notice that when you're typing on a laptop, you normally bottom out. Bottoming out is pushing a switch all the way down. And when you start using a mechanical keyboard, you tend to also bottom out because that's what we're used to. When you do that, you actually feel the need to exert more effort because you have that extra 2.5 millimeters to activate the switch. But that's actually not the case because mechanical switches also have something that's called pre-travel, which is the distance required for you to activate the switch. So some switches like KL Speed Copper, for example, they have a pre-travel distance of 1.1 millimeters. And they're actually also softer to press and you don't need to bottom out. But if you feel like you want the travel distance to be shorter, you can also put O-rings. Now, O-rings are used to dampen the sound when you press on a key, but you can also use it to shorten the travel distance. But of course, if you like bottoming out, then mechanical switches have more room for you to bottom out. So it's kind of like a win-win. Another neat thing about mechanical switches is that you can choose different types of switches with different characteristics. So for example, if you're the type of person who likes to type lightly, you can find a switch that has an operating force of 35 centinewton or gram force. And that force is the force required for you to press the switch. And there are also switches that have an operating force of 80 centinewton. And there are also mechanical switches that have the clicky sound. So if you're the type of person who likes to listen to the click sound because you feel like there's a sense of accomplishment every time you type, then good for you. This is the type of key you would like. And that's what's great about mechanical switches because you can choose the ones you like. And if you have a keyboard such as the Raze that's hot swappable, you can swap the different switches on the fly. The Digma Raze comes with seven different types of switches. Three from Cherry MX and four from Kale. Another thing related to why I felt like I was reaching out more or that the mechanical keyboard felt big was because on a Mac keyboard, your palm is level with the keys because of the low profile of the keys. Whereas on a mechanical keyboard, specifically the Digma Raze, there's around a 1.5 centimeter distance between the palm rest and the keycaps, which gives it a bit of an incline. So when I first started using this keyboard, I first put two pairs of palm pads so that I can have that same feeling of my wrist being level with my keys. So now let's talk about the split. If you're used to touch typing, then great. You can start typing on a split keyboard easily. But if you don't know how to touch type or you use only two fingers to type, or you think that you touch type all right, but you don't use all your 10 fingers to, to type on the keyboard, then I would recommend you taking some touch typing classes. There are many touch typing classes online. You can just find 
different websites that offer it. And what I would recommend is actually take five minutes of your day to just practice, to learn which finger goes to what key and to just do that for maybe a week or two until you're finally comfortable touch typing. The reason you don't want to start using the split keyboard split as is, is because you'll definitely experience like a shock in your system when you, st when you start typing it split. For example, when you start typing split, you'll notice what key you would press with which finger. So for example, for me, I'm so used to typing my Y with my left finger for some reason and my B with my right index finger. So initially, you'd want to have your keyboard in this sort of setup. Then gradually, maybe every other day, you can slowly split them wider and wider apart until you're comfortable typing with them and until I would recommend that they're shoulder width apart. And the reason why we'd want them to be used shoulder width apart is because, I don't know if you've noticed this, but on a laptop keyboard, you're actually sort of crouching a bit because all of those keys are jammed in one space. You have your wrists in an angle and this can actually cause uh, ulnar deviation. What you'd want is you'd want your wrist to be aligned with your forearm, like this. So when you type the keyboard split and shoulder width apart, you actually open up your chest. And as you can see from my position, you don't crouch because you're no longer so another thing you can do is you can also tilt the sides either inward like this and type this way or outward. And I guess this really depends on you on what you're comfortable with. For example, if you have shorter fingers on your pinky and your ring finger, you might want to tilt it this way or for whatever reason you want to tilt it. It's up to you as long as you're comfortable. So since we use a laptop, we're used to having our trackpad right in the middle, below our space bar. So what you can do is you can also put your mouse in the middle between your two keyboards or the two sides of your keyboards. And this way you can maintain that sense of familiarity, the movement of your right hand from the keyboard to the mouse. And there are many more examples of using a laptop with a split keyboard. So for example, you can put your mouse in the middle, you can put a notebook in the middle, you can put your laptop in the middle with a little stand. So you can essentially work more comfortably. And when you're physically comfortable in your workstation, you can allow your mind to focus more on the work at hand and not get distracted by the physical discomforts you had with your previous keyboard. I've talked about the configuration I have on my Raze on another video, which you can watch here. But first, before you go watching all our videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel because if you don't, the internet will be shut down for all of time.